Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruthie, Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1944, Part 5. These are letters from my, my mother to my grandmother. 818 13th Street, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, May 7th, 1944. Dearest Mom, it was nice to hear all about your visit to Estevan, and I'm quite looking forward to your trip up to Saskatoon. It'll, it will be so nice to see you. What time will you be getting in, and when will you leave? I guess I'll only be getting one letter from you before you come, so please tell me as much as you know by then. I'm quite worried about Brother's foot. I hope it's better or at least not worse. The doctor told me to keep it in hot water and Epsom salts as much as possible, and when not in water, up and resting with ichthyol 10% ointment on the wound. The ichthyol is supposed to be the best for drawing out poison, and also table salt and boracic acid were okay, but Epsom, Epsom the best. Perhaps you've been to a doctor by now, but if not, I hope this will help. I'll send the ichthyol and hope it doesn't take a day longer as packages often do. It's really funny the way our family gets poisoning so easily. It's been quite a run on sore feet too, eh? Marshall has hurt his leg again, but it's from this obstacle course in the commando training they're getting and apparently casualties are everyday routine. Ahem. Given Wednesday was... Given's wedding was interesting. This isn't the boy she was engaged to before, is it? She changed to R.C. for him, eh? Did you notice where Dr. Stillwell died? Also his heart. He was my first inspector, if you were putting it in the records. It's such a coincidence, all the heart trouble around, that it really makes you wonder why, eh? I'll send Bud's recorder back with you if it's okay till then. Gee, but I hope his foot will be okay. Sure worried. Oh yes, I went to Morris's flight party at the Bessboro Hotel. He was the one I met at Miriam's party in February. He wasn't stationed here then, but got posted here to number four. He was that, the one I went to the Bessboro for dinner that Sunday, and also the Navy dance, and to the cave, etc. Miriam was with Tony. We had a swell time. I took my dress to Miriam's and stayed there afterwards. I really enjoyed it, but there was an awful lot of drinking, as there always is at those parties. Tony was pretty high, but Morris was the soberest one there. He was sober, period. Nobby, the boy I was out with right after Christmas, and Johnny and I went to the, I went to the cave with him, were both there without girls, so came to our table. I felt pretty popular, as a matter of fact. Tony finally said, did you or Morris Moore bring Ruth anyway? Pack off, it's, etc. Morris was getting some food for us, incidentally. We were in the ballroom until they closed off the lights at 1 a.m. Then we went to the Elite. The Blue Room closed at 2 o'clock, so we went to the Gym and the Blossom Room and danced until it closed at 3.30 a.m. We peeked into the Paris and the Chung King. It was sure corny, somebody said, Oh, oh, look, look at the girls in the nightgowns. We finally got a taxi, but it was pretty late getting to bed. Marion even washed my face for me because I was so tired. I did not have anything to drink. It's quite hard to convince people, but I know you'll understand. Marion and I invited the sailors over for supper last night, and they wouldn't believe I didn't drink anything. They had a bottle of gin, but we took it away from them. It's in our cupboard now. You did ask me to tell you everything. Hope you're not disappointed. Mrs. Parrott was asking about Marshall at breakfast, also at church this morning. It's sheer corny. I got a ride to school with a, guy, with a guy from Varsity and landed at school just as Marion had told the teachers I hadn't been home all night, so there were quite a few comments. At our class, Miss Pridmore, Pridmore said, If you're a good teacher... You'll be so tired at the end of the day that you'll just be dropping and won't have any glamour left for nightlife. 
Miriam left Thursday. I had a couple of hours sleep before she and her entourage came over at 10.30 to pick me up. She brought over my evening dress, and as she was putting the grip into the car to come over, she said, That's Ruth's. So everyone had the idea I was going too. I thought they were kidding, so said, Oh sure, I was going just as far as Winnipeg though. I didn't realize until they asked if our berths were together that they took me seriously. Miriam's mom drove home and then a guy named Square drove us around in his car. We had lunch, lunch and everyone kissed Miriam goodbye. Then we drove the boys out to number four. They got their wings and sergeant stripes and left the next day and were meeting Miriam in Winnipeg. And this little piggy stayed home. Tony gave me 100 cigarettes before he left and offered me his liquor permit, but I didn't take it. Marshall wants me to meet him in Win Winnipeg if he only gets five days before he goes over and can't make it home. Surprisingly, Marion thinks I should go. It would be nice to see him again. Maybe if you write sooner, I can get two letters to you. Bye. Love, Ruth. Oh, say, you remember I only worked eight months and didn't get paid for July or August, only six months' pay, $630 income taxed, not under six, six, 660 so I may get my $86 income tax return for 1943. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Just bring me out of debt for a while, then I'll probably decide to buy a car or something. Oh, I know, my watch needs fixing. The stem is out. Can you find and send, send it somewhere? I had my fortune told. A lot of hooey, boyfriends, engagement stuff. But they did say my brother would be borrowing some money. How much, bud? I know I owe you, too. Gee, love, Ruth. 818 13th Street, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. May 12, 1944. My dearest mother, your letter Thursday was the swellest yet. Gee, I really loved it, and you're the best mother in the world, really. I'm so happy that Bud's foot is going to be okay. I was quite worried because I know how I felt, but of course he had to do the worrying, you had to do the worrying, and I had to do it myself. Oh, wow. I was prepared for the disappointment because I read Jean Newman's letter from her mother the day before. I was really sorry because it would be so swell to have you up here. Your dress really sounds cute. I think I've seen them around, or at least the ones that have appealed to me were in that color scheme. I must admit, though, there are very few. Don't kill yourself over the hat again. I really made up my mind to get you a house coat. Frank the sailor went with me to pick out your present. He wanted me to tell you and send the snap, so I did. Send them back, please. The kids have to be on the train at 1.30 tonight. That's the way it goes. Anyway, I couldn't see anything I liked, and we suddenly saw the hat, and I thought I, it might go with your dress, although it's a lot like your blue one. Anyway, I won't let it happen again. I'm broke again and no bond. Sure love you, though. I'm sorry about Pete. Hope he's better, and do I ever love the curtain material, just like at Campbell's. You're sure good at picking out what I like anyway, and were you ever swell about understanding? The gin's gone now, but went in degrees. It will be the last, too. Marshall thinks it's a slim chance, but hopes to make it home. I don't think he will, as all the guys are rushed down east as fast as possible. I think the invasion's in the wind. Editor's Note D-Day, or the Invasion of Normandy, occurred 24 days later, June 6, 1944. He hurt his weak foot quite a lot, but seems to be getting through regardless. We have a new superintendent. Tell all later, in, in place of downer, after all the trouble. Mr. Williams seems okay. We're getting milk for the children under eight at afternoon recess from now on. Really swell. Beth and I have been asking for it all winter, so we think he'll be okay. Oh, big thrill. General McNaughton visited the school this afternoon, and some of the kids even got his autograph. I was talking to my daddy after four, and he says, Why isn't he overseas? He's the guy that fixed my suit. A gambler, about 60, French, quite nice, though. Owns Parisian dyers, dire, etc. 
brother in Regina. I got a C for my art. Not so wonderful, eh? Miriam got a B. I guess I should have worked harder, but there seems so much to do. Been a swell winter, though. I heard from Bonnie. She's singing with the RCAF Orchestra and going to air stations. Quite a time, I bet. The kids, the kids are here now, so we'll post this and perhaps go to a dance and then bye-bye to, fa- to Halifax. Marion just said how swell it was yesterday. My mail was perfect. Yours and Marshall's, and today she got one from her mother and her sailor. Nice, eh? Oh, she commented on the fact that I read yours first. I love you very much. I'm a good picker, boy. Love, Ruth. P.S. The kids say if the hat doesn't suit you to send it back, because it looks okay on me. But they don't know how cute you are, though. 818 13th Street East, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, May 21st, 1944. My dear mother, Gee, I was looking for a letter all week from you, darling, but it was really swell when it did come. I hope you're feeling better, and the eats were delicious. Gone within the wink of an eye. I'm glad you like the hat, but tell me more. Do you think it suits you? Do I get another picture for my collection, please? Pretty please? I had quite a time. I forgot to post it early enough and was quite sorry. But I knew Don, hating, didn't you know his mom or pop at the H&S Club, was going to Regina, and he was delighted to take it. He said he'd amuse the passengers with it if the trip got boring. He's a cute kid, an engineer. Went to Scott a year behind me, quite young, obviously. And Corny, also oblivious, but got three A's and two B's, so not so dumb. It was swell talking to you and Bud, too. I know it was over two minutes, four in fact, because I phoned after Ruthie went through about 130 bucks this month, so I guess I wouldn't make too much difference. Oh, Mom, I felt so swell getting four nice letters on your parcel Friday, but Marshall said he won't get leave. He'll be at the depot in Lachin tonight and on draft for overseas. His mom phoned Friday to invite you over because she thought you'd be here. It was nice of her, don't you think? She hopes you'll come up soon anyway. She invited me over for dinner, so I went with her after church. It was very nice. It seemed different without either Marshall or Miriam. She let me read Marshall's letters, much to my surprise. He's been out with a couple of girls in Three Rivers, so she'd written and told him he was a flirt and asked if he'd told me about them, and he wrote back, Mother, I tell Ruth everything. Oh, wow, so she thinks it's pretty good, I guess. He had told me, though. We drove out to their fox farm in the afternoon. It's called the Saskatoon Silver Fox Ranch and is quite a place. They have a couple of families in houses on the place and a bunkhouse for the workmen. He got quite a kick out of showing me the root cellar and all the buildings, refrigerator room for the fish, his 180 chickens in the chicken coop, with running water in the troughs even, and of course the fruit trees and garden, four beehives. The the fox all have different names, Mars, Hitler, Frank, etc. Then the mink are so cute. Three little platinum ones cost $600. I had to take some rhubarb home, so we'll have pie, I guess. It's quite a place. It's really his hobby, as the laundries run okay by themselves, I guess. He says he'll fix my bicycle, so I can bike right out there to see it more often. Oh, Mom, about the summer. We have ten weeks to do as we please. I was talking to Mr. Oakland, and he is instructing the math, but it's six weeks and a lot of work. There isn't a suitable course in Regina. I could take four weeks art here. I really need a rest. Today is the 22nd and my last sentence above certainly is the truth. I think everyone in the city has a holiday but us and those at the power plant. Marion says we must be dynamite, eh? We were the only ones in the house who had to get up and we were sure mad. The streetcars weren't running so most of the teachers were late. J.P. had to take a taxi, 65 cents. Was she mad? Really, though, it's been straight through since Christmas and only Good Friday, and it's really too much. Everyone is cracking under it. 
It's bad enough ordinary teaching, but this takes every bit of your reserve patience. Don't tell anyone, but I really like it. But I realize that more than a couple of years at it could ruin anyone. For instance, Marion, who is very strong, was under last week. She could hardly open her eyes for a terrific headache and slept for days. The, the doctor said it was her nerves and she couldn't come back for a few days or else she'd be away permanently. Wilkinson, another teacher here, a young one, can't come back next year because the doctor has ordered a year's rest. Phyllis downstairs is a special teacher, had Winnie's class in Regina, has to go to bed every night at 9 o'clock now and had to quit night classes. One night last week was terrific. Marion was almost screaming with her headache and nerves, and Phyllis was screaming at her sister, the kid's 16 and quite running wild, all this at 1.30 in the morning. It's okay now, but it was rather upsetting then. When I think of it, though, how have I got through? We got our marks, and you'll think I'm a dope, but C's aren't so bad when I look at others. Beth just took one class and studied all the time and got a D. Marge, the teacher here, just won and flunked it. They never had any nightlife at all. I guess I should have done better, but for the amount of work I did, it was more than I deserved. The other teachers just got B's, too, Marion also. So they had only one class. I'd like to, to take math in one way and work hard and try for an A from Mr. Oakland, but how would I be next winter? Personally, I think it was the recreation after school that saved me. I was so surprised. I was, I was talking to J.P. and I had to stay to do posters for our display on June 7th. And she was asking how I did in my classes. And I said, oh, I suppose I should have worked harder. And she said, oh, but you need some recreation. And a while ago, we shouldn't have nightlife. She feels quite bad about the way the teachers are going under. Please don't tell Mrs. Newman, eh? Jean's party is this afternoon. She said I could go in. We have milk for the kitties at recess now. I guess I told you. But I got broke buying cookies to go with it. So now they have to drink it straight. I sure love them, though, again. Mom, what should I do this summer? I know it's my problem, but I'll feel guilty if I do nothing. Miriam will be back Friday. She's having a real time. Supper dances all along the line. Royal York in Toronto, etc. Most of her friends and relations are down east. She was in London, Ontario this weekend. A coincidence, Gordon wrote to say that's where he was going to go on his 48-hour pass. Well, good for me. I was roller skating twice last week. Going to take me when I come home, bud? There's a little, well, young anyway, guy who is teaching me to turn corners better. He's just out of high school last year, but was to Montreal this winter, so thinks, he, thinks he's old enough. I'm sure getting them younger every day. Bill was 23, Ted was 21, Gordon was 20, Marshall and the Sailor were 19, and now an 18-year-old. Glad you liked the pictures, but I didn't think they were very good. After I phoned you Sunday, Marge, the varsity student, and I went to visit O'Reilly's. Marge's mom is down east. June is in Vancouver, so we visited her mom. She really thought it was nice, nice of us. June will be home June 19th, so I'll see her before I leave. Gee, it's long from January 3rd until June 22nd, and only one day holiday, nearly six months. It's gone quickly, though, in a way. After church, I visited the Thorns for a while. Sybil is going to drive the car so they won't be selling it. Then Marge's cousin, a Don McAllister from the Parliament Buildings in Regina, took Marge and I for a car ride and a banana split at the Elite. He left the next morning, and Marge has gone to Indian Head to work in the entomology department of the experimental farm. She was in Regina for an hour, and I thought of getting her to phone you, but didn't. She'll be in Regina in September, so I'll see her. Oh, an insurance man came to school and said my father had a policy with his company, and he'd like to tell me about the kinds, but I said I'd see about it when I, came, when I went home in June. The kids will go home at noon the 22nd, I think. I had a piece of Jean's cake. They had popsicles, as you can't get ice cream, also candy. 
My, the cake was pretty with happy birthday Jean on it and pretty flowers in icing. Bye. I love you, and please write soon. Love, Ruth. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Dearest Mother, Love, love Ruthie. Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1944, Part 5. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history if this interests you. Finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, and photographs, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive. You might consider liking and subscribing. You also, you also might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History, with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care. And I'll see you next time.